Hey there, Louis Ecobels here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to tweet from a spreadsheet automatically on a recurring basis uh, using Microsoft Power Automate. This is a great technique to help you promote content with minimal effort. I use this to promote my YouTube videos on Twitter. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, before we actually get into building this automation, there's a few things that you're going to need to do. Uh, first things first, you will need to create a spreadsheet um, that is going to actually house the content that you want to tweet, including the URLs to your um, YouTube videos. So as you can see here, I've got a Google Sheet set up with one column and that is named Tweet Content. You can see I've got some rows here and if you actually click into one, this is just some static content. Um, that I'm going to tweet out, including the actual link to the YouTube video that I'm trying to promote. So this is what you'll need to get in place. Um, now, a very important step, what you will want to do is you want to make sure your the first row in your sheet is labeled. So you need to give it a column header. Okay, again, in this case, you can see here it's called tweet content. And the very second row, what you want to do is you want to enter a formula that is equals count A and you want to just set this to a range starting from the second row, okay, all the way down to your sheet. What this is going to do is this is basically going to um, count the total number of rows that have content. So you can see here I have 17 rows that have content and this number 17 is going to be used in our actual workflow to make sure that it's only looking at rows that have tweet content, okay? All right, the next step is to navigate to flow.microsoft.com. The first thing you want to do here is go ahead and click on create. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to click on scheduled cloud flow. So this workflow that we're building, this automation is actually going to be on a fixed schedule that you can define. This is the beauty of this. Okay, you just need to create your spreadsheet, update it with your new content and let the flow do all of the heavy lifting. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a name. I'm going to say tweet YouTube videos automatically. Okay. Uh, and then you want to choose when you want this flow to start. I'm just going to set it to tomorrow at 10 a.m. And you want to set your frequency. So I'm going to have this run every hour, for example. Okay. And then you want to go ahead and click on create. All right. So the first thing you want to do here is click on new step. Okay. And then you want to go ahead and search for the Google Sheet connector. So I'm going to search for Google Sheet and then click on it. Okay, and then you want to go ahead and click on the get row action. All right, and if this is the first time you're using this connector, it's going to prompt you to log in with your Google account. I've already done that. So the first thing I'm going to do here now is in the file field, I'm going to click on the little folder. This is going to bring up your Google Drive. You want to click on the arrow here, and then you want to find the folder that your spreadsheet is saved in. So I'm going to go ahead and select my tweet, my YouTube videos, Google sheet. Okay. Next step is to pick the actual worksheet. And so I only have one sheet here. So I'm going to go ahead and select sheet one. And the next thing that you need to do here is select the row ID. Okay. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to select one and I'll talk to where this number comes from in a second. I'm going to go ahead and click save. Okay, and I'm going to flip back to my spreadsheet now and you're going to see that Power Automate has actually added a second column here called Power Apps ID. So this represents that row ID field. So I'm going to go ahead and populate this. You only need to do this um, every time you update your sheet here. Okay, so I'm going to update this and this is the key that we will use to refer to any of this content. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on New Step. Okay, and in the choose an action box, we're going to search for initialize a variable. So I'm just going to type, start typing the word initial, and you can see here the initialize variable. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Okay, um, and what we need to do now is we need to actually create a variable to store that maximum value from our spreadsheet. Okay, um, so I am just for simplicity's sake going to click on the three dots and I'm going to click rename so I can give this variable a name. Now I'm going to call this row count string. Okay. Um, and in the 
variable name field. Again, I'm going to call this variable row count string. In the data type uh, field, I'm going to select string. And in the value, what I'm going to do is from the dynamic content box, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to select the tweet content column. Okay. Now, essentially what this is doing is this is creating a variable to store that maximum number of rows, uh, the value here in your spreadsheet, okay? And it's important to note that because we're using a formula so that we don't have to come back and update this, um, this formula is currently being captured as a data type string, okay? So that's why we want this variable to be set to a string. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on new step. Okay. And again, we're going to search for initialize and we're going to initialize another variable. Okay. And we're just going to rename it here again. And this time we're going to call this row count int. And we are going to give this variable that name again. So row count int. And we're going to set the data type to integer. And what we're going to do here in the value field is we are going to go ahead and click on in the dynamic content box expression. Okay. And we're actually going to type in INT parentheses, and we are going to pipe in the row count string variable. Okay. So you just want to click on that and press okay. Okay. So that's the value we're assigning to this variable. And what this is doing is it's taking that string value that we're capturing from our spreadsheet here, and it's just going to convert it to an integer so that we can reference it in our workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna click on new step again. And what we are going to do now is again, we're gonna search for initialize a variable. All right, and I'm gonna rename this Okay, and this time we're going to call this variable random number. Okay, and we're going to give this variable a name and I'm going to call it random number. And again, we're going to set this to data type integer. And this time in the value field, what we are going to do in the dynamic content pane, we're going to click on expression. Okay, we're going to start typing R-A-N-D for rand. This is a random function, parentheses. And here what it's asking us is to specify um, the lowest possible number that this variable can have in terms of um, its integer and the maximum value. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with two. Okay, um, and we are now going to pipe in the row count integer. So this is saying the lowest possible number is two, um, given that we are using the first row here, okay, or the first ID to capture the maximum number of rows. Uh, and the second number or our starting point is two, uh, and the max value is this maximum value at any given time, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay, click on save. The reason that we're using a random number here is because this workflow is going to kick in um, on a schedule, what we're going to do is it's going to randomly select one of these um, rows to tweet out every time it runs, okay? This way we can have a little bit of um, randomness to how we promote our YouTube content. All right, the next thing that you wanna do is click on new step, okay? And you wanna search for the Google Sheet connector again. And then you wanna go ahead and select the get row action again. In the file field, you wanna go ahead and find that sheet that you're using to store your tweet content. So I'm just going to select it again. Then you want to pick your worksheet, okay? Um, and this time, so this is the action that's actually going to uh, be used to populate the tweet, okay? In the row ID field here, what we are going to do is we are going to add our random number variable. So that's important. That's kind of why we take this step. So it is going to say, get me one of the rows from my sheet, um, and I want you to return the random or the row that pertains to the random number, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click on save, okay? And then you wanna go ahead and click on new step again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to search for the Twitter connector. So search for it and choose an action box, click on Twitter. And this time you wanna select the post a tweet action, okay? Um, and in the tweet text field, uh, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to select 
the tweet content column and you want to make sure that it corresponds to the get row, the second uh, get row action. So you can see here get row two, that's our most recent one. I'm going to go ahead and select tweet content and I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test this. So I'm going to click on the test button. Okay. And I'm going to click on manually. I want to manually invoke my trigger and then I'm going to click on test. Okay. Now we're going to click on run flow. Click on done. And you can see here that this flow succeeded. So I'm going to open up my Twitter account here and I am going to refresh the page. And you can see this tweet here. Want to learn how to use the new Microsoft Teams approvals app. Okay, it was just posted. And I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to run this again, just to show you. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my workflow. Okay, and I'm gonna click run again this time. Run flow. Click done. Refresh the page here. You can see here that the flow succeeded. And let's go back over to Twitter. I'm just going to refresh my page here. And you can see here that it ran again. And this time it selected the same tweet. So let's go ahead and test it one more time. Let's refresh my Twitter feed here. And you can see here that it just tweeted 20 seconds ago and it randomly selected another tweet. Now, one thing to note about the Twitter app, there are some limitations in terms of being able to post the same tweet consecutively. So you'll see here it had failed. That's because it likely landed on the same tweet uh, or a tweet that I had posted uh, I'd say in the past couple of hours. Okay, so something to keep in mind. The beauty of this though is hands off, set it up, update your spreadsheet with minimal effort and let the workflow do the rest for you to promote your YouTube. Okay, uh, that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like it. Please drop a comment below and please be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Power Automate tutorials. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.